God bless America. Hello, everybody. I am the talk radio protege. Welcome to Freewheeling, a new facet of the protege program. So there's a few news stories that I thought might be worth commenting on, but I wasn't going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. So, and also, I was a little bit busier at work today than I normally am, so I didn't have the time to, well, didn't take the time, I guess, to take some notes and do a whole bunch of research. Uh, so I'm just going to shoot off the cuff for a little while. I'm going to talk about the news events of the day that I want to talk about. And there's another one that I want to talk about that is not relevant in the news today as far as national headlines go. But, um, but it kind of springboards off of another issue that I've got a vested interest in. Uh, it, it, it's one about the Second Amendment. Is I hope that I've conferred on to all of you. I am very passionate about defending the Second Amendment. So we're going to talk about these things in due course. But just in case I do get interrupted, let me say, if you enjoy this video, leave a like. If you want to see more content like it, hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a single video. Now let us get into it. First of all, big deal today. The United States Embassy to Israel just opened in Jerusalem today. Another promise kept by the Trump administration. You know, Trump is going to run out of promises before his four years are up at this rate. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he just, if he was able to hold a rally and say, well, we did it. What else is there to do? <laughs> you, need, you guys need to tell me what, what I can do to make your lives better. That would be great. That would be an amazing uh, rally for Chuck to get to hold. Uh, th there's always going to be things that can be addressed. There's always uh, room to cut back on government overreach. So I don't think the work will ever be done. But that, that would be a fun rally for Trump to show up and say, remember all those promises I made during the campaign? Well, here's how we've completed them. That that would be a good time. Now, now the opening of the embassy drove the Palestinians to go a little ballistic. Now, I don't think that anybody, that any human is so animalistic that they are compelled to lose their marbles every time something that they don't like happens. You know, I, I've got a little bit more faith in, uh, in humanity than that. But the left was warning us when it came to moving the embassy to Jerusalem that there was going to be people in the Middle East that attacked innocent bystanders. And so Israel's been seeing this coming. You know, there, there were the riots on the border with Palestine that happened a few weeks ago. And, uh, you know, the, the Israeli government responded in kind. And I think at the time, there was only one death or there were very few deaths. It wasn't a bloody affair the first time around. But I, I'm pretty sure the headline on Drudge Report today was that 49 people had died in the riots on the Israel-Palestine border. And, you know... I thought that's awful that those people died, but what does it say about the Palestinians that they totally reject Israel's legitimacy as a, as a country? You know, Israel was established as kind of a payback to the Jews that had died in the Holocaust. If there was a place that was a Jewish homeland, then there would be a place for Jews to go to if they need, if they were being persecuted by all, by these other countries. There would be a place that would be sympathetic to their plight. I, I think that was the idea. I don't know for sure. I'm not an expert in the foundation of the modern country of Israel, but I, I would imagine that would be the justification. And ever since its establishment, Arab nations, the Palestinian nation, have been bent, hell-bent on obliterating from the face of the earth the Israel, the country of Israel, for the sake of existing. What, what is Israel supposed to do to make peace with people that disagree with the premise 
that Israel has a right to exist. Now, if, just in case there are any leftist lunatics listening in right now, let me put it in terms that you will agree with. And I know you will agree with it because I've heard it from the mouths of your own activists before. What are black people supposed to do to make peace with people that disagree with the basic premise that they should exist? What are gays and lesbians and transgenders and other kin and furries and ad nauseum? What are they supposed to do to make peace with people that disagree with the premise that they should exist? What are women supposed to do to make peace with people that disagree with the premise that they should exist? Now, if you agree with B, C, and D, but not A, then we have no common ground. There's one side that says all four of these groups do have the basic right to exist. And there's another side that says, well, one of these doesn't. And I'll give you a hint. If you're on the left, you're not on the right side. <laughs> pun, pun not intended. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I wanted to comment on that. There was another thing. We haven't talked about... Uh, the Russian investigation recently. It, it's been... Has it been a week or has it only been a few days? I don't remember. But there's been news circulating that there was a spy in the Trump camp. In the, in the Trump campaign. And no, it was not a Russian spy. Uh, the, the agency that the spy worked for starts with an S and ends with a by. Just in case you were wondering. Apparently, the Obama administration, by way of the FBI through the Justice Department, was spying on the Trump campaign as a whole, not just Carter Page, but by, on the Trump campaign through an informant. And that's been one of the reasons that has been cited recently for Rosenstein to not uh, reveal the... Uh, the mandate, the memo that establishes Robert Mueller as the special counsel. And I, I think this revelation, you know, they, they make this revelation because national security, uh, we had a, we had a, uh, a CI, I can't remember what the C stands for, but informant is what the I stands for. Um, we had a CI within the Trump campaign. We can't reveal him. It would it would uh, it would be bad for national security. I think that revelation is going to backfire because it's spying on a candidate for political office, and he just happens to be the opposition party to the administration that told the spy to go and work on that campaign. And nobody, nobody's going to be held accountable for this. I, I guarantee you. you know, I haven't been observing politics as long as a lot of other people in the business that I'm trying to uh, break into have. But I promise you, nobody is going to get punished because there was a spy, whether or not he was illegally in the Trump organization. And... I talked about this in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago, where I talked about the two-tiered justice system. There's one for everybody that's not in the club, the club that you don't talk about, and not and not, and not fight club. There's uh, there's a justice system for everybody that's not in the club, and those people get punished to the fullest extent of the law for every violation of the law that they commit and get caught for. It. And then there's another tier of the justice system. That tier is for everyone in the club. And that tier of the justice system does not pursue members of the club. Because in the perspective of the club members, and, and the members of the club are part of the justice system. It's why they can get away with this. Members of the club don't get punished by the justice system because members of the club perceive losing membership or failing to achieve the next level of membership as the worst punishment that anybody on the face of the earth could undergo. And it would simply be cruel by, their, by the club's standards to punish anybody any more 
than simply losing membership or failing to achieve the next level of membership. It's why Hillary Clinton is not going to be uh, indicted. And if she is indicted, then everybody in the club is not going to participate in the prosecution. She's not going to be punished for breaking the law because she was at the number two level of the club and she was going to be anointed into the top level of the club and she lost to somebody outside the club. That's the biggest embarrassment. That's even worse than simply getting caught and losing your membership in the club. That's even worse than just simply failing to make it to the next level of membership. You lost the next level of membership to somebody that's not even in the club. Oh, and by the way, if you're not in the club and you make it to a really high point in the club without having to climb the ladder, you will never be a member of the club. You will not be accepted in the member of the as a member of the club if you come from outside the club and make it into a high level. You simply will not. The club is not going to take you. But I've already reha I've already hashed all of that out in another video. I didn't mean to get really bogged down in that. I wanted to have fun with this video and I wanted to talk to you guys about an idea that I had. I was I was talking with a friend of mine recently about a concept called constitutional carry. And I'm a fan of the Second Amendment. I like to know when when uh, gun rights legislation is uh, is on the table in different areas. And constitutional carry was on the table in the state of Oklahoma. It was, at the time that we were discussing it, it hadn't been signed, but it had been passed by both of the legislative houses of the state. By this time, it's been vetoed by the governor, who, from what I understand, is very unpopular in the state right now. Uh, lame duck governor, very unpopular, can't do anything right, so what does she do? She does something else wrong. <laughs> but um, constitutional carry is, is, this, is this attitude. Let, let me explain it this way. There are several different attitudes about the right of the people to keep and bear arms that the government can take. There's the attitude that the people simply cannot be trusted under any circumstances to responsibly or uh, or lawfully even uh, exercise their right to keep and bear arms. These are the states, municipalities, counties, etc. that heavily, heavily, heavily regulate firearm ownership and carry. These are the May issue states, the states that you can apply for your concealed carry permit, but the state does not have to issue it to you. Then there are the, uh, the states that say, well, yeah, the people can be trusted to lawfully exercise their right to keep and bear arms, but we can't automatically trust them to do it responsibly. These are the shall issue, um, concealed carry states, you have to get a license to carry your firearm, and the state has to issue it to you. And I like shall issue legislation. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good thing. But the mindset is that the people can't be trusted to responsibly do it on their own. They must, they have to go through state mandated education before they can be trusted to, to responsibly uh, exercise this right. There is a mind, then there is the mindset of constitutional carry. That is, the people can be trusted to lawfully and responsibly exercise their right to keep and bear arms. There is another level of this mindset that has not been embraced, to my knowledge, by any state. And I think that this would be a fantastic thing to do, and it would do two things. It would do three things. It would... Uh, it would, what's the word I'm looking for, um, encourage the people to lawfully and responsibly exercise their right to keep and bear arms rather than just allow them to do so. It would encourage responsibility. It would permanently, I think, encase the right of the people to keep and bear arms in a bulletproof legal barrier. That pun was fully intended. And it would drive the left 
to conniption fits like you have never seen in your lifetime. That's the number one reason why I want to see this stuff go in, because or because the left would so completely and totally lose their minds if this legislation were ever passed. The legislation goes like this. I'll, I'll give you a hint. First of all, it's called the Minuteman Act. And d go down in the comments now. Take a few guesses at what this is going to entail. It's called the Minuteman Act. And here's what it does. The mindset of the Minuteman Act is that not only can the people of our state be trusted to lawfully and responsibly exercise their right to keep and bear arms, but they can so but they can so do it that we wish to partially trust the defense of our state to our citizens. We want to encourage our citizens to be the best exercisers of their right to keep and bear arms of any state in the union. We have, we want to have the best Second Amendment observers in the nation. So, we are going to do this. The people of our state can carry, if, if you can purchase a firearm, you can carry a firearm. That's constitutional carry, by the way. That there should be no further barrier to carrying a firearm than purchasing one. So, the constitutional carry is just one element of the Minuteman Act. The second element is, there will be provided at the cost of the state, which is to say at the cost of the taxpayer, but semantics, at the cost of the state will be provided education for the people so that they can more responsibly carry their firearms. This education will consist of marksmanship education, uh, legal education, self-defense education. It'll be like the concealed carry education that you have to go through in many states to get your concealed carry license. But instead of you having to pay for it, now your state's going to pay for it, pay for you to do that. Once you have completed the class, you, you take the required exams, you get a certificate, and you don't have to have this certificate to carry a firearm. This certificate just says, I'm a member of, let's, let's use Oklahoma for example, it's the most recent example of constitutional carry. I'm a member of Oklahomans for the responsible exercise of the Second Amendment. I've taken this class, I've passed this exam, I, I've, got, I've got my card. And then, when, once you've done that, then you can volunteer. And this is what's really going to drive leftists up a wall, because it obliterates one of their, uh, one of their, I, I want to, I hesitate to call it strongest arguments against the Second Amendment, but it's not an argument against the Second Amendment. It's a, it's a confusion of the issue and that's why it can be strong. It totally obliterates that, and it drives them up a wall because of the words that are about to come out of my mouth. Once you've got your responsible Second Amendment card, you can volunteer as a member of the Oklahoma militia. A militia maintained by the state of Oklahoma. You'll receive a uniform when you volunteer for the militia, and it's not a complicated uniform. It's just a jacket and a hat that will have the logo, the symbol of the Oklahoma militia on it. You get the hat, the jacket, and there will be militia activities that you can attend as a member of the volunteer militia. Uh, you can, you will uh, be organized on a municipality level. There will be volunteer leaders of municipality organizations of, uh, of the Oklahoma militia. And then at the battalion level and above, the state hires veterans to be the leaders of bigger units of the Oklahoma militia. Once a quarter, in your quadrant of the state, there is a... once yearly, quarterly, once yearly in your quadrant, and four, four times a year, because there's four quarters in the state of Oklahoma, once 
yearly in your quadrant of the state, there will be a militia muster day, a uh, muster day that you can go to. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the state will reimburse you for any work that you missed to attend militia muster. Whether that be, uh, whether that be in dollars because you took, uh, leave without pay, whether that be in, uh, comp time if you had to use annual leave to leave your place of work you'd get a certificate that you'd take to your boss and say the state of Oklahoma wishes to confer upon me X number of hours of comp time and it, maybe it wouldn't be all of the hours that you missed to go to muster day maybe it would just be a, a portion but you would uh, you'd, you'd go to muster day it'd be Friday Saturday Sunday Friday would be uh, marksmanship training where you could go and shoot down the range there would be, uh, Saturday would be drills training where you would do uh, defensive and tactics drills with your battalion and other battalions. And then Sunday, this would be the most fun, Sunday would be war games where you divide up in your, uh, your quadrant into teams and you do combat situations with each other. Uh, you, you could use paintball, airsoft, uh, non-lethal rounds. It, it would be a blast. People would have so much fun doing this stuff. And then the governor that signed that into law, this is where this is where you really send the left over the deep end. First of all, passing this legislation is going to take some of them off. But it's going to fly under the radar, especially if it happens in a smaller state. It's going to fly under the radar until five years into the program, there's the state muster, where the governor calls the media to come and behold the force that is the Oklahoma militia or whatever state. Well, I'm, again, just using Oklahoma mostly, most recent example. And he gives a big speech saying, look at the militia that we have. And all of the members, all of the citizens of the state of Oklahoma can be a member of this militia if they desire to. And I think every state in the Union should do this so that you can more readily defend your state in the face of an invading power or tyranny. And the left would have a conniption fit. That governor would overnight become a household name. You'd be on every Sunday talk show. You'd be on every single daily broadcast that you could be booked on. You would be busy for two weeks appearing on media shows and on the radio and wherever. You'd be called before Congress to testify by Democrats on the little committees. And you would probably get sued by a whole bunch of civil rights organizations and have to go testify before the Supreme Court. You would overnight, the, the governor that did this would overnight become a household name. And if the program was popular enough, and I think it would be, you'd be a shoe-in for the next president. Let me know in the comments what you think about this plan. I think it's fantastic. Why shouldn't we educate as many gun owners as we can about the about their rights, about the law, about the risks, about the responsibilities, about everything that we can, and make them the most responsible and intelligent and safe exercisers of the Second Amendment that we can. Why shouldn't we do that? And if there are any leftists watching right now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the next generation of racists and sexists and bigots and serial killers and rapists are going to be educated on how to use a firearm in these courses. First of all, first of all, I have plenty of confidence that our law enforcement is able to pick up these people on their radar and monitor them so that if they should move towards committing a violent crime, that they can be apprehended. You know, it, it seems like every time a mass shooting happens, law enforcement has to admit that that person was on their radar. Uh, Parkland, that, that shooter was on everybody's radar. The, the, wa the crazy Waffle House guy, that guy was on law enforcement's radar. The law enforcement knows who the bad apples are. But that takes me to my second point. We live in a nation of the rule of law 
and guilty until proven. <laughs> I said that totally backwards. Innocent until proven guilty. Not the other way around. Innocent until proven. I was thinking that it wasn't that way and then I said it. <laughs> Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty means that you can't be punished for something you didn't do. Innocent until proven guilty means you can't even be punished for something that it can't be proven that you did. It, it might be, it might kind of be known that you're guilty of the crime that you committed. But if it can't be proven that you committed that crime, you can't be punished. That's what the rule of law means. That's what innocent until proven guilty means. For better or worse. Sometimes it's for the worse. Sometimes it means somebody can kill a whole bunch of people and commit travesties against innocent civilians. Men, women, and children alike. But more often than that, much, much more often than that, it means that innocent people are saved from being persecuted for a crime that they didn't commit because it can't be proven that they did that. It's much, much more difficult to prove that something didn't happen than to prove that something did. That's why it is innocent until proven guilty. Because if you don't have an alibi, if you were at home alone playing video games when a, when a shooting went down and the cops want to throw you in prison and you're guilty until proven innocent, sorry bud, you're going to jail. That's why we have a system of innocent until proven guilty. Because we would rather not, we would rather send one criminal into the world along with nine innocent people than send nine innocent people to prison and one guilty person. That's the trade-off of innocent until proven guilty. And I am sure that there are many leftists that want the system to be reversed that have benefited from the system the way that it is now. That's all that I've got for this freeform video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this format because I didn't have a script at all. I was just kind of going. I was talking about stuff that I wanted to think about, talking about stuff that was on my mind. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you did. If you if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, like it, hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a single video. Come back every weekday for a new report. Until next time, good night and God bless.